It's time to fire this thing up. Hit it. Hey John, what everybody's looking at here is our Tender Series 13. A little different than your Super Sport. This has a few bells and whistles on it, but it's here at the Palm Beach Boat Show on display. Could you imagine this on the back of your yacht as a Tender instead of like an ugly inflatable Zodiac? Wow. Dude, this, this, this is class, this, John. This is unbelievable. Hey, good deal you made it. Hi, I'm John Braviscus. This is Mike Borelli. And Mike is with Matan Classic Collection. He also owns Matan Marine Restoration. And if you've been following the program, you know that we've been up at his shop in Taylor's the boat. Boston area, mm -hmm. Halifax, I believe it is, mm -hmm. where you are the best restorer of whalers in the world. You gotta stop saying that. Uh, just, come on. Don't give me a big I'm, head. I'm no, I'm telling you the truth. All right. We're back on Taylor you can White's 17 foot <laughs> Montauk. We're putting in some 1708 up front. We got to finish the front. You promised that you were going to teach everybody how to how to bag in vacuum bag in the stringers and the composite transom that we put into our boat, yep. right? Um, we're going to be doing. We're going to get it done. Very cool. Has the inner liner been dry fitted into the craft? Are we ready to put that in? Methac related adhesive and maybe even start on the foam. Well, I talked to the guys today in the shop and check it, checking in with them every day, and they're working on it this week getting the stringers all at the height that we want. So when we get back, we can get right to work. Guys, we're gonna blow your minds this time, but first we have to give acknowledgement to all the amazing companies in the marine industry who help make Shipshake TV possible. Hi, this is Jared with BoatOutfitters.com. Today we're gonna to talk about taking an area in your boat that you wanna mount a King Starboard frame door that doesn't have an existing hole cut out. The first step that you're going to do is to mask off that area to make sure that you don't spider crack your gel coat. Next, take your door that you have and go ahead and use it as a template to put up to the area that you're going to mount it. Take a marker and trace around the frame of the door to see that that has a proper fit. The easy way to cut this out is to use a, a jigsaw, but one of the tricks that we know is to take a half inch drill bit and go ahead and pre-drill each corner to have a radius where you can either enter the saw or turn around the radius of the cut. Now when you get your door, you want to make sure that you dry fit it into the area. If it fits a little snug, what you're going to want to do is use some sandpaper to go ahead and open that area up. From there, once the door's in place after you dry fit it, you're gonna to wanna to take a drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit to pre-drill all of the existing holes. Next, you're gonna to wanna to pull the door back out and grab a countersink bit to make sure that you're just beveling in just a little bit to not spider your gel coat. Once that's done, you're gonna prepare your door for installation. So from there, you're gonna run a thin bead of elastomeric sealant all the way around the edge of the frame of the door and also into each of the mounting holes. After that, you're going to set the door back into the existing hole cutout, and at that point, you're going to go ahead and grab your fasteners. Now, for fasteners, we either suggest that you use stainless steel fasteners, or Boat Outfitters offers the powder-coated option that matches the frame of the starboard door you're installing. If you do use a powder-coated option, you're going to want to make sure that you use a hand screwdriver with a little bit of a cloth over the edge to not crack the powder coating on the screw. For more information, or to look at all the doors we offer, visit BoatOutfitters.com. ShipShape TV, where boat improvement lives, is made possible by the entire collection of beautiful Sunbrella fabrics. Sunbrella, the only fabric to offer both design and performance, above and below deck, by Boat Outfitters, your source for replacement hardware, custom king starboard doors, tackle centers, and more. Need it? They'll build it. Visit BoatOutfitters.com to update or customize your boat today. By Yamaha. Reliability starts here. And by the TaylorMade Group. Leading marine manufacturers of original and replacement boat tops and covers. Windshields, windows, and hard-to-find replacement parts. Aftermarket accessories. 
our all-new custom T-top covers, and more. Let us help you make your boat look ship shape again. Mike and I had quite a road trip leaving Palm Beach. We had a couple of stops in Florida. We broke down. Actually, we were bringing back one of your tender series. Florence, South Carolina. Beautiful Matan Classic Collection tender series. Oh my gosh. It, it was sold, and so we had to bring it back up there to Boston. We stopped in uh, Pennsylvania, checked out the sea keeper. Oh my gosh, that plant was really, really, cool. really cool. We're back at Matan marine restoration with Mike Borelli and last time Mike you promised that you were going to teach me how to bag in these stringers and I was hoping the audience could kind of learn the advantages of this and maybe if they want to on their boats do some vacuum bagging they'd know a little bit more about the subject. First off, why is vacuum bagging these stringers, why is that superior bond strength compared to handling up fiberglass and just rolling out with resin and getting the air bubbles out. John, for over 20 years, I got into vacuum infusion and vacuum bagging, and I'm a huge believer how superior of the laminate layup under a vacuum it is. And from vacuum infusion to vacuum bagging, two different techniques using the same technology, you get such a far superior bond because in that atmosphere, you are sucking out all that extra air that you can roll for a month of Sundays with your fiberglass roller, you're never gonna get it out. Okay, let's go through how we're going to laminate the stringers into our hull. So what how, how, This is gonna be 1708, knitted by Axel, yes, right? Yes, four okay. layers. Um, the first layer, um, how far do you wanna take it outboard on both sides of the stringer? We'll stagger it, we'll go six, four, three, two. Okay, six inches, four inches, three inches, two inches. Correct. Why do you go with the biggest piece first, the widest piece first? Because you want a full laminate. If you went with the smallest piece, then the second laminate would just cover that second piece and then bond to the hull there. The following piece would then bond. You wouldn't get a solid laminate. If the first piece is solid, then the second piece is solid and the third piece is solid. Now you have one solid continuous laminate. Okay guys, so that's how you need to do that. Now, um, we're going to wet it out with the resin, mm -hmm. okay? Your guys are going to start rolling we're it We're going to hand lay it. Yeah, you're going to hand lay it. You're going to see us do just like a lot of folks out there have done. You're going to see us hand lay it, and we're going to roll all those air bubbles out just like we normally do. The guys will squeeze them out with their hands, etc. But then we're going to put the vacuum bag on it. Okay, go through that process. What's the first uh, material that goes over our wet fiberglass? Well, you'll see we're going to put some of that blue peel ply that you've seen us use before. Right. Peel ply, and then we're going to put our vacuum bag over it using a two-sided rubber adhesive tape. You'll see us. Now, what if, what if there's even a slight little crack in the perimeter of this adhesion tape that we're going to be putting on top of that peel ply? Well, we're going to hear it, number one. We're going to be able to tell when we have a really good vacuum because what's going to happen is that vacuum bag and everything is going to form right around our stringers. And we'll be able to work it and we'll be able to move it around and we'll play with the amount of vacuum being pulled on it until we get everything like, exactly like how, where we I want mean, it. We're changing, we're literally changing the environment. I mean, we're changing atmospheres going from regular walking around the planet to putting something under vacuum. Yes. Um, how, how much vacuum is used here? Well, I'm gonna give you a really good example, John. Under a vacuum, okay, say we take the four layers that we're gonna lay up, and you have four layers of fiberglass. Right. Well, we see how thick four layers of 1708 is. Yeah, it's like a quarter it's, inch. It's like a quarter inch. Yeah. But then we add resin to it, the resin makes it swell, right? And even though we work that air out the best we can with our roller, it's gonna be better than a quarter of an inch. Well, that same four layers under a vacuum would be 25% of the thickness of that. It would be so thin, no different than we used to see those infomercials, take a nice thick sweater like that and make it this flat so you can store them away in your closet. Okay. Well, this is doing the same thing. But then what it does, it also acts like a constant clamp. So all those layers of laminate that we have laid up, it constantly has pressure pushing down on that laminate 
and that's something that we can never get in this atmosphere. So you're actually clamping your laminate. So there's in place. no air in the laminate. Okay, it's 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 perfect pressure everywhere. Sure. Every kind of square inch is getting done. How long do you think we're going to have to bag these strings? How long will it take for the glass and the resin to cure? It's going to probably be about three hours, John, because under a vacuum, the um, curing process acts very, very close to exactly how long a resin should take. But you know, we've all mixed up that hot hot bats before. Yeah. So we're pretty careful on when we're mixing, especially when we're doing vacuum bagging, you got to be exceptionally right on with the ratio because you don't want this kicking before you get a vacuum on it. Well guys, this is what it looks like. We can't rush here, but we'll be back in just a little bit. Shipshape TV will be back in a snap. If you'd like to watch today's episode again, go to our website, shipshapetv.com, and watch it free on any device, anytime, anywhere in the world. Tell a boating friend today. Hey, welcome back. Day two. I'm Mike Borelli. We're here at the Tamarine. We've been working with the Ship Shape TV crew on Taylor White's 1982 Boston Whale of Montauk. Before the break, we got Taylor White's stringers all glassed into place using a process called vacuum bagging. Well, we still had one more thing to do to get the hull structurally sound and solid, and that was to get our three more layers up on our bow section. If you remember, we left that after we dug all the foam out. We infrareded it. Dennis just got done catching it up with the rest of our hull. It now has three layers of 1708. Our hull is strong, solid. But I got a little surprise for you. What you're looking at here around Taylor White's transom is a vacuum infusion or resin infusion process. Now we haven't started infusing it with resin yet, but let me explain this to you. If you saw earlier, I came in and I laid in four layers of 1708 fabric and I used some 3M77 spray to hold it in place. And I also had to set up my intake manifold. This is what's pulling a vacuum on our bag. This is our injection manifold. And you'll see the spiral tubing that we use that goes up around our perimeter. I ran an extra manifold up around the back, coming across the top of the transom, just to be sure that all the resin has enough to flow and get to every little nook and cranny that we needed to get to. Vacuum infusion process is the single most reliable, strongest, lightest type of laminating that you can do. We have been practicing it now for about 20 years. And in fact, we use the vacuum infusion process on our new classic collection boat line. But our customers always get the best. Taylor's our customer, so nothing but the best for Taylor. It all started 40 years ago with our Flitz Polish. The Flitz Polish is an excellent product, very well known for restoration from anything from all your bright work to fiberglass to isinglass to even painted finishes. The Flitz polish is excellent for not only bringing it back, it's gonna leave a protective coating because it has a built-in wax on all your metal finishes like your stainless steel or aluminum and so on. We actually guarantee it two to three months in a saltwater environment. But as you know, technology is only improving. So recently, we have developed what we call the Flitz sealant. Now the Flitz sealant is actually what they call a ceramic coating. For those of you who have purchased a car recently, the first thing the dealership wants to do is set you down and sell you a coating for your paint that charges anywhere from $800 to $1,000. This ceramic coating 
This is something you can use very, very easily. Simply spray it on an applicator or a microfiber, then take a dry microfiber and simply buff it dry. It's so easy, it's almost too easy. And I'm not saying the bugs won't stick, I won't say the salt water won't stick, but with this coating underneath, it's so easy to wash it off. It's basically effortless and it's guaranteed for at least one year. It's a phenomenal product. This bottle here will actually do three full-size cars for a 28-foot boat very easily, plus some. Now, as I said earlier, you can use rubber, you can use on plastics, you can use on glass windshields, you can use on fiberglass, your isinglass windows, everything. Now, Flitz products are available through West Marine. They're available through your leading marine retailers. But if you go on flitz.com, you'll find actually quite a bit of video, helpful hints guides, and all these products that are available by Flitz. I'm Oli Gench, and thanks for watching. Don't pull the plug. The boats, the tools, and ShipShape TV will be back in a snap. Welcome back aboard. Fishing for boat improvement? Well, you caught it right here at ShipShape TV. While the transom is finishing its resin infusion, I wanted to jump down the road a little bit to Bristol, Rhode Island. And Mike, this is where you have all of your parts professionally infused. Where are we in Bristol? John, we're at CNC Fiberglass Components. The DuPonte family has been a longtime friend of ours. And just as of two years ago, we actually joined forces and they're the company that lays up all my fiberglass components for our new boat line, the so, Classic Collection. So all the infusion on the 13 gets done here at CNC and everything. What, what is this mold that we're looking at, Mike? John, this is actually the mold to our 21 Heritage Edition. Right. You know the console with the beautiful teak and holly sure, top on sure. it? Well, this is the base. This is the mold to the base. And what Mike's doing here is he's getting the mold all set by waxing it, polishing it, buffing it so the gel coat and the part doesn't stick to our mold and it pops right out of okay, our Okay, what, what color gel coat did the customer go on this base? Because if you recall, Taylor White wants us to kind of transform into her the wearer gray. into the military gray. Correct. Okay, um, but what color gel coat is he going to spray in and how much? Well, we're doing white for this particular customer. We'll be spraying in about 20 mils of gel coat. The guys will then go in and skin it with some uh, chopped strand out of the chop gun. And then, John, we're going to be using an interesting core material that I'm not sure if the uh, viewers have seen before. It's called core mat, and it gives a real solid, stiff part without adding heavy core material. Taylor requested a taller center console than the original 1982, the one that came with the boat. Correct. But, Mike, I know it's in a different mold. Can we go over there and, and kind of continue on with the building process? Absolutely. Lead the way. <laughs> John, what we have over here is the mold to the console that we're going to be using for Taylor's boat, but we also use it for our 17 and our 21 SE. Now, Taylor guys requested a taller center console than from the one in 1982. Okay? Which we did. And, and this is 10 inches taller than the original, correct? Correct, John. What, what, what's the extra room for, Mike? John, with the use of today's boats, back then, I think we talked about it at one time in the shop, now they expected everybody to sit down and drive the boat, but they don't do that anymore. We all stand up and run the boat and we lean on a leaning post. So we brought the original console up about 10 inches, changed the fascia, but what we did is left some of those classic lines. Okay guys, so I don't know if you can see the military gray gel gray. coat that's already been sprayed into this mold. And like Mike said, they skinned it with fiberglass chop strand mat and vinyl ester resin. Just like we do, we're gonna do on the other okay, one. Okay, I wanna get into the core material that you're gonna be putting into her center console. What do we have? John, what we use, what we've all talked about and we've seen a lot of is our Penske board. It's nothing but the best quality core material that you can use. Where up in this console about is that gonna land? John, this is gonna be our dash panel. So all our gauges, our control, everything's gonna be cored through this Penske board. Okay, and, and what is what is this material right here, Mike? I haven't really... John, we use this a lot on our builds, okay? This is called core mat. Core mat is an impregnated type of material that it's almost like a diaper, John, and it acts as a core material, yet the interesting thing about it, John, it's very lightweight. It does its job for stiffening up parts like this, 
but you don't end up having to add the extra weight to a solid which, which means you're burning more gas okay and who wants to do that in a boat so you want the lightest strongest, strongest. core material that you can provide and it's way better than just solid fiberglass it absolutely right. is john you got you offer you offer customers okay only the best of the best john i want to make sure all our boats whether it's the restorations or our new boats we use the highest quality materials made or used in the industry. Now guys, we are going to be gel coating, re-gel coating Taylor's boat down the road with the, the same hull. gray. Yes. It's gonna be amazing, but right now we need to take a very short time out. Hopefully, by the end of the program, we're putting the new inner liner from Matan Classic Collection into Taylor's original 1982 hull. Hopefully, we'll be seeing that after the break. Don't sail away. Shipshape TV will be back in a flash. Welcome back. You're tuned into Shipshape TV, America's favorite boat improvement show. Well, we're back in Halifax, Massachusetts at Matan Marine Restoration, guys. And we got a lot of work done this time on Taylor White's boat. We showed you the process of how to vacuum bag in the stringers. We also showed you how to infuse with resin a fiberglass transom, four layers of dry glass, 1708, all infused. And what Joe is doing right now, this is Mike Borelli's son, this is Joe Borelli. What Joe's doing right now is he cut some four inch wide um, 1708 strips and he's kind of glassing all the way around this Penske board perimeter that Mike likes to put into this top flange. But I wanna point this out, this is really cool. Do you guys see this channel right here going all the way around, okay? Mike tells me he fills that completely with methacrylate. It keeps it from mushrooming, all right? And you get a really good seal all the way around. Methacrylate adhesive will like literally fuse two pieces of fiberglass together. Now naturally he's gonna put some putty on the stringer. He promised me that next time the inner liner is going to be into Taylor's boat and we can continue on with it by foaming in the craft. We're also going to be flipping it over, doing some Duratex. We're going to be re-gel coating it so it's military gray, but we're out of time. I'm John Graviscus. We will see you on the next go around.